Hi, I'm Misty Eller. I'm an adult nurse practitioner working with the hepatobancreatic obiliary surgery team, which is uh, long for HPB surgery, at Atrium Health Maine in Charlotte, North Carolina. I specialize in the inpatient recovery and care of patients from complex abdominal surgeries. And I'm Lacey. I'm the clinical nurse leader with the HPB team. I work with Misty and your surgeons to make sure that we're providing evidence-based quality care to help you recover after surgery. We're going to talk about how we tailor the type and amount of pain medicine prescribed to specifically meet your needs. The way that we think about prescribing opioids and pain medication has changed a lot in the last three years especially. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the norms and what you can expect for the number of daily pills needed after a major operation. So we're gonna talk a little bit about an overview of how we used to practice versus how we practice now. So what we typically did in 2017, when I look back at our data and our numbers, is that most patients were prescribed on discharge 40 to 60 tablets of oxycodone. Oxycodone is a pretty uh, strong opioid medication and it's a purest form. And so that prescription probably was more than what the patient needed. We also prescribed more long acting medications, things like Oxycontin, which was scheduled once or twice a day. We no longer use that at all now, um, which just shows that we've been able to improve. Research tells us that a third of patients used less than seven tablets after going home. And if they're getting 40 to 60 tablets, that gives them quite a few pills that they need to learn to dispose of properly so they don't fall in the hands of children or people on the street or they don't fall into our water system and sewer system. Research also tells us that 85% of patients do not dispose of the extra tablets, which can be really dangerous for them. Having expired medications that are these types of narcotics are extremely dangerous to have in a household. Research shows us that increased doses of opioids increases the risk of overdose and even death, but it's not been shown to reduce pain or improve the patient's function. What that means is taking more of the medication doesn't necessarily reduce how much pain you're having or make you feel better, and it doesn't make you walk, deep breathe, cough, do all the things that we tell you you need to do after surgery. So now we're gonna talk about what our current practice is. So when I looked at the data, which was two years after what we previously were discussing in the overview, what we realized is that we were able to tailor the type of medication used and the number of the tablets for each patient, which means your prescription is specific to just you. And we try to do that with all of our recovery after surgery. So this was just one way to be able to increase that as well. We have decreased opioid prescription tablets by 42% in the last two years. So what does that mean for you? Instead of previously in 2017 patients going home with 40 to 60 tablets at discharge, now they go home with on average between 15 and 20 tablets. This benefits patients by not having a surplus of dangerous medication in their home and not having to dispose of those unused tablets. We tailor the number of tablets based off of the last two days during your hospital stay and how many of those tablets you were using when you're in the hospital and the dosage of what you were using. This is all calculated by something called a morphine milligram equivalent or morphine mill equivalent. So what a morphine mill equivalent is, is a calculation of the type of opioid and a patient takes each time and in each medication is converted into a number amount. So all narcotics are made from opium, which is a plant, and all of them, whether it be something that's an illegal drug on the street or it's a prescription medication, all of them can be calculated and can be made equal to each other based on what those calculations are. So for example, we're able to take a medication that we converted into a morphine mill equivalent and the CDC and FDA have made guidelines for us telling us how many are safe based on your age, based on what type of operation you had, based on your history of what you've taken in the past as far as opioids and whether you're someone who has used them long term or whether you're someone that's never had one ever in your life. And so they let us know what is safe but also effective for you. This helps guide us for best practice and it keeps you safe and it keeps community safe because there's not lo no longer the surplus of the medication. Now we routinely use multimodal pain regimen which utilizes non-opioid medications. These are your things like NSAID therapy. So some of the brand names that you may recognize are things like Toradol, Ibuprofen. They actually work really well to decrease inflammation at the site of surgery or the site of injury, and that can decrease how much pain you're actually having at the site. Um, acetaminophen is also another medication that we use. So these medications are used on a scheduled basis, which prevents you from having these spikes in pain, which makes you want to use more of the opioid medication at higher doses. What we know about which patients are more likely to use more of the opioids. And so we know that there are some populations of people that are going to use more of these medications. And we have to 
be aware of that and we have to be cognizant of that. And we want to make sure that we protect those patients so that we don't increase what they're going to need long term if they've been on long term narcotics. The least likely to use these are going to be people that are older and that means those that are usually greater than the age of 80 that have low body weight, so your underweight patient, and those that have never used any type of opioids in the past or that have only used them you know, in a long period of time prior to having their surgery. They typically use less of the medication. The most common patient population that's gonna use more of the medication are kind of the opposite of what we just spoke about. People that are a lot larger um, in size, so people that weigh more. And this, can, this actually converts over to younger men so even though they're not older, younger men have a higher muscle mass and density, and this actually affects the metabolism of these medications as well. The history of mental health disorders, people who have even things such as depression and anxiety, which a lot of people in our society suffer from, and even if it was just temporary, um, you were on a medication for a short time and it was situational, the fact that you've had that history in the past, it can affect the opioid receptors in your brain, and so this can cause you to need a higher dose or more of the medication. So when we talk about how much pain you're feeling, we're going to use a visual analog scale, which just goes from 1 to 10 with 10 being the most amount of pain and one being the least. Now, unfortunately with surgery, there is pain associated. We can't get you down to that zero number after a surgery like Not this. Yet. <laughs> so when we get you up and moving, which full warning is going to happen frequently after this kind of surgery, your pain might be as high as a five to seven immediately after getting up or after you cough, you start hiccuping, anytime you sneeze. So that's when we bring in our pain medicine and we try to get you to a comfortable level, not that zero or one, but something comfortable where you can get up and move around. Some people are very sensitive to these pain medications and also anesthesia in general. So with that can come feelings of nausea. We also measure your nausea on that same scale from one to 10. So 10 being the most nauseous you've ever felt and one not being very nauseous at all. So in conclusion, what I would say is that it's safer if we tailor your pain medication related to your specific pain, and every patient's different. We know that you're gonna have pain after surgery, but we also know that giving you a lot of opioids and a lot of narcotics that have a lot of side effects associated with them and having you go home on those types of medications, which also have its own risk that we discussed before, we know that that's not the best thing for every patient. So our goals are always to help you to improve and to help keep you from harm's way, knowing that you're gonna be moving more, you're gonna be coughing more, deep breathing more, and doing all those things that we ask you to do and we encourage you to do. So I'm gonna make sure that your pain is controlled so that you can do those things for us when you get home and continue to recover. We prescribe you medication so that you have enough doses to be able to cover that period of time. We also see our patients after hospital discharge back in the office with our nurse practitioner within seven days. So if I give you seven days worth of the medication tailored to you and the number of pills tailored to you and what you've been utilizing, then I know that you're gonna be seen within a week and our nurse practitioner or PA in the clinic is able to continue to assess your pain and the level of pain and how well the medication's working for you. We wanna thank you for watching and learning about the norms for the number of daily pills needed. We encourage you to explore the app for more information and helpful links to expand on this subject.